We're out here bringing good news. Good news. Because there's a lot of bad news. When you put on the telly and you watch that news, that 6 o'clock news or that 10 o'clock news, there's a lot of bad news. But the good news is Jesus. He's good news. And he's just so amazing. I want to tell you a little bit about Jesus. You see, Jesus, Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible, Jesus, he's the saviour. And he died on the cross so that he might be saved. You see, the Bible says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. So you have to draw near first. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. But we get so busy in our life, just existing, paying the bills, and just doing the same old, same old thing, we haven't got time a lot of the time for God, but God says that he's actually calling you into a relationship. And how you start that relationship is by talking, is by talking to him. And you know, that if you can hear me today, that God loves you. And there's just nothing that you can do about that. He just loves you. He can't love you anymore, and he can't love you any less. He just loves you. And today we want to just tell you about the love of Christ. Because he's, he's so powerful. And it doesn't really take that much working out that there's a God, because there's an order in the, in the system. You know, the sun and the, the moon and the, the stars. There's an order. God's put an order, and there's seasons, and you look at the trees, and there's apples that come out at a certain time of the year. God put an order in all of that. And then he, he uh, sent his son because he wanted everybody to be saved. Now you are so, look at that guy over there giving me the sign. See that guy over there? Here I am, a preacher and a pastor of a church, and he's giving me the sign. This is the sign of the age that we're living in, of pestilence. This is a sign of ungodliness. And you don't need to mock me. Listen, let me tell you something. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he ain't coming back like a baby in Bethlehem. He's coming back with fire in his eyes. And he's coming to judge all the nations. So a good suggestion is that, is that you give your life to Jesus. You know, how comes Jesus become a swear word? You don't say, ah, Buddha. You don't go, ah, Allah. But you go, ah, and you take the Lord's name in vain. Do you know what that's called? Blasphemy. And do you know, on the 6th of May, the king is going to be crowned. And everyone will be going, God save the king. Well, what king is that? That's the king, King Charles, but that's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're out here spreading good news. And the good news is, is that Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. Hallelujah, isn't that good news? That he wants to have a relationship with you? The Bible says all have sinned. I've sinned, you've sinned, everybody's sinned. But I tell you something, when you acknowledge Jesus, and you give your life to Jesus, he will take the sin from you, and he'll give you righteousness. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You need to be saved. You're either saved or you're not saved. You're either going up or you're not going up. And God wants you to go up when you die. When your spirit leaves your body, he wants you to go up. And he's calling you into a relationship with him. That's why it says in the Bible, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. And that's what we need to do. We need to draw near to God. Listen, the world is uh, in a pretty bad state, isn't it? You know, you've got inflation. You've got laws that have been passed that are completely ungodly. We've got such bad things going on in the world. Oh, and there could be a nuclear war at any moment. And I tell you, this is the time to call upon God. If there was any time to call on God, it's now. Hallelujah, because what it needs is people to humble themselves and have a pliable and teachable heart rather than a proud heart saying they know it all and they don't need God because when you die, your spirit will leave your body and you will see God. And he will ask you, what have you done with my son Jesus? Because he wants you to be able to get into heaven, you see. But the only way to get into heaven is you need to be marked. Look at the man over there, look, blaspheming. Look at him, you can't help but, but give him bad language. This is the hour and the day that we live in. You know where, where it says this in the Bible, just before Jesus comes back, he says, I'm going to tell you some signs. 
It says there'd be wars and rumours of wars. That men would be lovers of themselves, boastful and proud, arrogant and disobedient to parents. That's what Jesus said. Just before he comes back, he says, you're going to see this all over the place. And he's going to come back. And a lot of people are going to be caught out. And God doesn't want you to be caught out. He doesn't want you to be caught out. It's what the Bible says. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. You've got to draw near first. And there's some people that go, oh, I don't believe in God. Listen, it's so obvious there's a God, it don't take any intelligence to work out that there's a God. You know, you need to have a look, the sun, it comes up every morning. Apples come out about September on trees. That ain't no incident, that's no accident, is it? That was because God put an order on the planet. And he made man on the sixth day. Do you know that? The six is the number of man. And when the devil comes, it says his number will be 666, the number of man, the Antichrist. And he's going to deceive man. But when he comes, you won't think, oh, that's the Antichrist. When Hitler came, everyone loved Hitler. Do you know that? All the German people loved Hitler because he helped the, the people. And he invented the Beetle, actually, the people's car. And it wasn't until sort of further down the line that he realized, everybody realized he wasn't as good as what he said he was going to be. And then God... Hallelujah, God wants you to get saved. Because one day the Antichrist is going to come. He could be alive right now. And it says everybody that's names that's not in the Lamb's Book of Life will bow down and worship the Antichrist. You don't want to be like that. What you want to do is have a humble heart, a teachable heart, a pliable heart, repent of your sin and ask Jesus to come into your heart. So today, if you can hear me, it's a good thing for you to listen to me and humble yourself and say, yeah, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. The Bible says all have sinned, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life. And today God loves you. Do you want the gift of God? Hallelujah. God saved the king. That God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And he's calling out to you today to say, I want a relationship with you. I don't, I don't want, want you to mock me anymore. anymore. I want a relationship with you because my word says draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Do you know today I believe that God wants to heal people. If you've got sickness in your body, Jesus can heal that sickness. When he died on the cross, I tell you, he didn't just die on the cross with a loincloth around him. The Bible says he was, he was so marred, he was, he was so disfigured, it says that he was unrecognisable as a human being on that cross because he took sin and sickness on the cross. So, I tell you, you know, everything's okay until then somebody gets cancer or somebody gets an issue and they go, God, can you help me? Of course God can help you. And God is calling out to you today. And today he's saying, I'm calling you. If you can hear me, God is saying to you that he is calling you into a relationship with Jesus. He wants you to know him. He died for you. He died for your sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life. And when you give your life to Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, hallelujah, it puts you on a new path. Now you watch the news, any good news on that BBC, on that sky? You're hearing bad news or good news? Well, Jesus Christ is the good news of the kingdom. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. And God says that if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before my Father in heaven. So what you need to do, hallelujah, is humble yourself and be able to say yes. You live in a Christian country. This, the, the, the Christians need to get together, go to church and pray for this nation. Do you know the Bible says that your prayers first before you pray for yourself. First before you pray for your family. That the Bible says first you need to pray for the government and those in authority. Hallelujah. No good moaning about the government if you've not prayed for the government. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. God's alive. He's not dead. And he loves you, and he's calling you into a strong relationship with Jesus. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. That's what it says in the Bible. So if you can hear me today, and you've got any sickness in your body, or you've got any disease in your body, or you've got anything that your body shouldn't be having, you can pray a prayer and get rid of that sickness. Glory to God, because Jesus took sin and sickness on the cross. 
sin and sickness on the cross. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you believe or not, I'm going to be praying for you anyway. Father, I want to thank you for everybody that's come out here today that can hear me. Father, I pray that they humble themselves and have a Father, and they acknowledge you as the true God of earth, the true God of heaven, Father God, that you would just, Father, manifest yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, and touch everybody. In Jesus' mighty name.